thanks. So I'm going to talk about the Elix for my term internals. Uh, and this talk is basically a journey on how I was looking at the code, on how they see how the formatter works. And I really like that. I really like what I saw. Uh, and I also even contributed to a bug at the beginning of the formatter. So about me, uh, I have 10 years experience uh, programming. I'm a computer scientist uh, at Brasilia. Uh, I'm from Brazil. Currently, I work at Shopify. Uh, and if somebody wants to add me on the social networks, uh, GitHub or Twitter. And fun fact about me, uh, I actually had deployed the Lixi app before Phoenix even exists. Uh, so briefly, uh, this talk I'm going to talk uh, about what Elixir did before the Elixir 1.6. That's the actual release with the Formari. Uh, I'm going to jump with the Formari and talk about the hit uh, The state of Elixir uh, at 1.5 it was really great, like yeah, he shipped with a lot of features just to make the life of the developer easier. Uh, at breakpoints during the shell, uh, except to blame, and also at IMPL. Uh, breakpoints, basically, uh, before uh, we have to explicitly put a breakpoint into the code and to stop there somewhere. And now you can, like in the shell, when you're debugging your code, you can just uh, call one of those functions and then you have breakpoint there. That's one example of how that works. Uh, like I, I want to put breakpoint in the function call the code query. When I call that the code query function, the breakpoint will stop right on the execution. I can ask where I am. Uh, and also I can open the editor to edit the code that I'm actually uh, trying to debug. Uh, also, exception blame. It's one of the, my favorite features ever in Elixir. Basically, when I call a function and it fails the, uh, the pattern matching before, it just prints in a pretty way why it fails. Saying like, I try to call it uh, access fetch with full bar. The first one, it didn't match the first argument. The second uh, definition doesn't match the guard, the third and fourth also. And the last one didn't match new. Like this for debugging is awesome uh, because mostly, mostly in Erlang, when you do have a functional clause error, you are blind there. Like you know that it doesn't match, but you have to look why. And also at IMPL, that's a way to declare the callbacks of our behavior. Uh, when I have a model on Elixir, I, I can have a bunch of functions there. Sometimes I don't know uh, what this function is about. Uh, sometimes it's just a callback. Uh, that way I can declare, saying uh, this function, handle call, uh, it's a callback from the server. Uh, in this case, in plug, I can say that call is a callback from the plug behavior. Like those things just uh, is aimed for the developer happiness in the end. And that aligns directly to the Elixir goals. Elixir uh, now has mostly three goals. Productivity, maintainability, and reliability. Those goals are important because it's the way the team, the core team of the Elixir aims for the future. They also think about that. That may seem like, uh, I would say, uh, bias because like everything can, can be a lot of buzzwords but though like the team really thinking about uh, how to make the your daily more productive but, uh, productivity <laughs> and how to maintain the code better for the future uh, and like just to make sure that I'm not just talking things hundredly that is talk about Jose Valin uh, that really tells that, like, why the decision of uh, choosing uh, one of these topics. I really recommend to, for you to look to that. And finally, the formatter. Uh, the formatter was added into Elixir 1.6 that was released this year. 
uh, and basically this format your code to maintain compatibility and constants with other legacy projects. Uh, basically, it's a community way to say if you're going to code in Elixir, you're going to code that way. Uh, it breaks the barrier of newcomers to the language because uh, when you are going to contribute to one code, you're going to contribute the same way that all the other projects are going to do that. Uh, and basically, uh, it has a, uh, it's not so strong opinionated. It's not a linter. The format is just format a code to maintain the same AST. So you can be, uh, you, you can still write by the code there, You're not gonna complain, but uh, it's gonna be easy to read and see that's a better code. And also it's built in inside Mix. So it comes for free in Elixir. So how that works, I have a method code here, uh, pretty terrible. And I want to be beer, pretty. This is it, so if I run mix format uh, on my mix project, the code becomes a pretty one. Like, really readable. But what happened on the, the hood? Uh, so, uh, there's a hello world example in functional language that is factorial. <laughs> I'm gonna use that as an example to see uh, how that works into the hood. Uh, basically, if you are going to see how, uh, how the mix task is defined inside the Elixir uh, source code, you're gonna see that it just calls uh, a function set from a string. It reads a source code, calls a function, and returns an enumerable. That enumerable, if we join them, we're gonna have actually the code formatted. This is the code being peery. There. Uh, but like, it's not just that. What happens inside that function? Uh, what happens is uh, that function calls uh, code formatted to algebra. To algebra basically outputs that, which is hard to understand. <laughs> like, but okay, how I got that algebra from? What's that algebra? Uh, let's take a look at code format algebra. Uh, inside that function, it calls two main functions. That is string to token and token to coded. Uh, you could see uh, right now that there is not a uh, elixir function. They are a lag function. Uh, string to token. So I have my code before uh, and I want to tokenize that code. So it just prints that code being tokenized. Uh, it try, tries to run every string of the code separately, try to get rid of some space uh, and create a array of the tokens of that code. Uh, then, once I get the tokens of the code, uh, I just pass that tokens to be coded. Then I have that instructor. Uh, for those of you that are already programming Elixir and know what code is, code is a form of metaprogramming Elixir. You declare a code that's gonna be lazy evaluated into the runtime and eventually going to be uh, uh, evaluated to run there. Uh, but is, is a quote, is the same thing that you do that. I'm quoting that function. But in the end, like, it's different. If I see the, the, uh, the quote of the function, is that is true. The other one was that. Uh, somehow, uh, when I call token to code it, it's just putting a lot of new metadata into the coded output. Uh, some metadata regarding the line of the definition of the token, uh, if it is using parentheses or not. 
uh, and also comments. Comments are uh, put into that. So now I, I could see that I have code from to algebra. I pass a string directly and I get the tokens. Uh, within the tokens, I can get the code that would fight just for the formatting. It's not the same code that you have in Elixir. Uh, then I just can call uh, code format block to algebra. Then I'm going to have that lazy algebra. So I'm creating algebra based on the code that I have in the language already. That is that. <laughs> so before, uh, if you see how that tree is built, uh, that tree itself is built using some. Not, not so much structures, like you can see, you have a couple of nodes and the node repeats itself. Uh, and that's a good reason for that, because uh, there was a critic before saying that pre repeating is hard to do. It's hard to uh, pre repeat what's complex at, at the time. So there was a paper uh, dated uh, 2000 uh, saying about how to simplify pre repeating. Uh, on uh, OCaml, that was the base that, that the Elixir core team took to create uh, what you call inspect. In Elixir, you have two ways to output your value on the on the output. out. If you put puts, that's just gonna print that, or inspect, that's gonna pre-print the value. So what the format is doing is getting the coded version, uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, so there's a model in Elixir core called Inspect Algebra that basically specify that, and this is used every time you type Inspect. Uh, so this is how I get from this method code to a pretty one. Uh, but I don't know if he, you saw, on the slides back, I, was not, uh, I could not see that comment stop condition on the tokens. And that's a good reason for that. Uh, I, I shouldn't have comments uh, into tokens or into tokens to code it. Like, I don't, I don't, don't, don't make sense for me to store comments into a source code and uh, process a source code. So, uh, into that two algebra, it extracts the tokens to another process, and in the end of uh, those uh, process, before called block to algebra, it just inserts the comments there into the coded that's going to be transpiled to algebra. And finally, we're going to call uh, the expect algebra format that's gonna apply the same behavior that you apply to a map when you want to just call io.spect into a map. Uh, one of the things about that is because those two files are not, those two functions are not functions that exist inside the Elixir code. It's actually a lang. And if you see the namespace, it's Elixir. So, like these functions are uh, declared inside a file called elixir.url. Basically, the file that really uh, transforms the code into binary. Uh, and this, those two functions that was uh, tokens to coded, and no, string to tokens and tokens to coded. They are called right before uh, a step that's to, that is lexer, right before the lexer. So I pass the code to the lexer to have uh, my binary. Uh, I tried an experiment to see like if I pass the code directly to the lexer and just write a file, I have my function, I have my model that I right to use, and I had that right to use. Uh, I found that really interesting because basically Elixir took a smart approach 
to use the compile of the source code to get the uh, meta programming way so I can output my code so I can format my code pretty way like so much math <laughs> uh, I just did that because like uh, every, every time that you type mix format again uh, like there's so much stuff going on out there there's not just like uh, passing two tokens and pre-printing no, we are just compiling the code, you are going to tokenize that, you are creating a coded format for that, and finally, we are uh, formatting that. Uh, and like, if you want to start using the formatter, you can just do that with Mix right now. Uh, if you pass the end of the formatter, a dash, Everything that comes into the SD comes from the SD out. So you can test like what, what, how it behaves. And also the formatter has a really pretty interesting uh, flag called check formatted that's pretty useful to CI. So if I say like uh, from this day on, I don't want any more codes that are formatted in my, in my in production. I just keep that that says like this code not well formatted. Uh, again, that's all that I had today. Uh, just want to thank Shopify because Shopify uh, supports me <laughs> every time. Uh, and any questions?